This is SSN. Story Studio Network. Hi, my name is Pamela Fuseli, and I'm the host of Popping the Bubble Wrap. Are you the person in your family who worries about the safety of others, about buying safety products and using them? Are you yelling, yes, that's me? This is the podcast for you. Raising a child or children can be a hair-raising undertaking, and keeping them safe is a priority. Parachute's Popping the Bubble Wrap podcast explores what you really need to think about as a parent or caregiver, and provides easy tips on prevention strategies. No bubble wrap here, though. As parents raising children in the age of technology, thinking about how we can get our children to put down their phones and get outside is top of mind. ATVs are a lot of fun, and they can certainly motivate a child to get away from screens. This is true whether you're a family who lives in an urban environment and rides the trails on weekends or holidays, or a family who lives in more rural areas and has regular access to trails. ATVs may also be a machine used to tend property or farming. They are heavy and powerful machines, making them potentially dangerous, especially for children in youth. In this episode, we'll talk about both the fun and the risks of riding ATVs, as well as key tips and best practices for managing those risks. Joining me today are Justin, Dawn, and Todd. Thanks so much for coming on Parachutes Popping the Bubble Wrap podcast. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having us. So first off, do, do you relate to the idea do, of your getting your kids outside can be a struggle? Is that something that uh, that any of you deal with? Don, maybe I'll start with you. Yes, especially, especially since COVID, the kids became accustomed to being online, social media, Netflix, Disney Plus, all kinds <laughs> of internet I, uh, scenarios. So getting them outside is definitely a, a struggle. We try to get out at least once a week. Yeah. Um, Todd, is that, is that something you struggle with as well? <laughs> yeah, or are they, they outside kids? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, they're kind of outside kids, but they, uh, it's a struggle in some days, but it, it just depends on how you can, how you can coerce them, I guess, to get out. Yeah. That's a good way of saying it. But <laughs> What about you, Justin? What are your kids like? Are they outside kids? Yeah, my young fella is definitely an outside kid, and the baby, he, he'd live outside if we'd let him, but, uh, you know, some days I guess it's more of a struggle to get dad drug out the house to go with them, more than anything. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so they're motivating you to get outside. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Um, and I think, Don, you know, what you said around around COVID, I think, was uh, was really key, and you get out of the habit of doing the things that you used to do before the pandemic. And now, you know, you've got, you've got more options now. So let, if we can start a bit talking about your kids and using ATVs, what you worry about, how you've kind of approached um, using ATVs and Todd, maybe you can, maybe you can start and tell us about, you know, your experience, you know, how many kids do you have? What ages are they? When did they start using ATVs? Sure. Uh, we've got uh, three children. Our oldest is a uh, boy, 15, and then t- two girls, 13 and 11. Um, our youngest, uh, he got his first ATV when he was probably around five or six. And uh, just a little teeny thing uh, that didn't work very well for very long. But uh, it was uh, it got him started. But um, they've all kind of, once they hit about 10, that's when they really kind of wanted to get out and doing stuff. It wasn't until uh, our son was 12 that we let him go on trails and and go out with us on rides and stuff. So it, it it's a, a learning curve. Our youngest is now 11, so I guess she kind of snuck in and got out there a little bit earlier than he did. But, hey, by the time you get to the third, that's just what it happens. But no, I, I think that that age is, is kind of key, that kind of around once you hit the double digits, they want to really get doing stuff on their own. Um, there's nothing wrong with before that either. It just has to be the right size machine. And so where did they ride um, before they rode on the trails? You said they, you know, there was a certain age that they started riding on trails. 
Yeah, uh, around our backyard and our club okay. is our ATV club. We're very fortunate, and we've got uh, a fairly big parcel of club land that we can use. And uh, it's just really public land, and so it took the kids out there, and it's a nice open space for them to, to kind of get the hang of it. Mm-hmm. Don, what about you? What are, what uh, what's your kids' experiences with ATVs, and and do they still ride them, and and where? Uh, my daughters are fourteen and sixteen year old, and they originally started riding when they were about five years old as well. We lived in Quebec at the time, and we had a huge yard, so we bought a little tiny geo, and they had a strap on the back so that if they got too fast or got away from you, that it actually would stall the, the machine so they couldn't continue on, which I thought was awesome. So they still get out now, and like everybody else, they want to go on their own and experiment. Yeah, and do you ride on trails? Is it is it through yes. a club as well? Yes, well, where I you... live now, I live in Russell Gornish, so I have a, a trail right behind my house in the summertime. It's not used in the wintertime because it becomes a snowmobile trail. So right now we have direct access. We don't have to trailer it. Away we go. So we, uh, we have a side-by-side -side and we have a couple of quads, so we all go out as a family and enjoy the that, day <laughs> that's convenient to have a trail right by your your backyard for yes. sure yeah justin what what uh what's your experience with your children on uh on atvs and what do they like to do well my older son is 13 my youngest son is 15 months my older boy he started i think he was about three and a half when he got his first quad and it also was a i don't know if it was a geo but it was it was a, a chinese brand atv and it had the same safety feature actually. Um, instead of a tether, it had a remote. So I could watch him in the yard, and if he was getting out of hand, I'd just hit the button and shut him off. And he couldn't start the bike again until I, I reset it. You know, I I actually remember the first summer, I think, that he was riding. He was, I heard heard the bike going and going and going, and then I heard it stop, and his mother could run at the house. And she was, she threatened to sell it before we were at that point, but he, uh, he put her on his side trying to do donuts in the yard and put the four wheeler into the wood pile and, <laughs> it was a lesson learned. He learned that if you're going to do donuts, you got to lean to the inside. <laughs> My 15 month old son had his first ATV and dirt bike rides this summer, actually, and he's totally hooked. But uh, you know, we we ride everywhere. I'm I'm heavily involved with the ATV club here, and and my youngest son started riding even down the side of the road to get to trails with me whenever he was eight. And it's made him a much more responsible rider because of it. I, I ride with guys that are my age that are just complete lunatics, and I'd rather go ride with my son any day. You've you've touched on my next question was about you know what has your experience been or what has your approach been to you know keeping the kids safe um, and what kind of rules did you have in place and you've talked a little bit about the the technology that you've used I actually have never heard of the remote control uh, version of of the ATV so that's very interesting what what other um, have they taken any training like a, a like official training or not official but you know formal training. So here on PEI, you can't, legally you're not allowed to ride until you're 14 years old. Hopefully they're in the works of changing that at some point. But so he did take an official training this summer, which it doesn't, uh, it doesn't reflect anything to our laws here, but he still has it. And uh, I, I always looked at it in a way, I spoke with his grandmother about it one day that, you know, I'd rather teach him how to ride these things young whether it be he rides snowmobile, he rides four-wheeler, he rides dirt bike, he rides them all. And whenever he gets to his buddy's place and they say, here, take this thing for a ride. Well, now I don't have to worry about him, you know, breaking his neck on it. It's a really good point of, especially, you know, kids who may not be exposed to ATVs on a regular basis or, you know, on their first time of, you know, really respecting the machine and, and understanding how it works and, and things like that. I know that um, we've seen some injuries from, you know, first time users like we do for other machines, like, you know, the, uh, the new scooters that are there that are out there um, that, uh, you know, we see people able to rent in the first time they take them out it's a disaster because they don't know how they work 
Don, what's uh, what's your approach with, or ha- has been your approach with your kids around, you know, training, or what do you worry about, you know, in terms of injuries of of them getting injured on on the ATV or from another person driving, you know, a quad, say, and them being involved. What's been your approach? Well, for myself, I made sure that they had the ATV riders course as soon as uh, as soon as we moved to New Brunswick, actually, in two thousand and fifteen. And they did that. And I have one of my child, the 14-year-old, who really likes speed. So whenever we go out, we make sure that she is in the back. <laughs> so she can't get ahead of anybody just because we're afraid she may lose control. She's she's a little more risky. But um, other than that, we just make sure that they have the proper gear, the helmet, they know what to do in case of an accident. They know how to check their vehicle. They're never alone. They're always with somebody else. And um, to make sure that we know where they are and who they're with. Yeah, you touched on the the gear piece. What, what kind of protective gear do they wear when they, when they ride ATVs? Uh, helmet, long sleeve clothing, long pants, eyeglasses, be it sunglasses or some sort of goggles. Yeah, that's about it, I guess. Justin, did you have something to add to that? Gloves. And we ride dirt bikes, so boots is a big one for us. Boots is just as important as your helmet on a dirt bike, and I found it the hard way. Yeah, I think all of that is is really important. Um, Todd, um, what what do you what's your approach, or what has been your approach with your kids in terms of riding ATVs, and and what do you worry about? <laughs> 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 if anything, <laughs> more, the with, laughing. With, with the kids, it's pretty easy to worry about everything, whether they're they're riding a, an ATV or, or or driving the side by side or riding a horse or driving the boat or riding a snowmobile. Like it, it's the same thing, right? Like when you first teach your kid how to ride a bicycle, it's mm-hmm. uh, it's watching them go down the street uh, for the first time on their own. And you're paranoid whether they're going to stop at the stop sign or not. Experience is is everything. Our son did an ATV course, which was fantastic. But honestly, one of the biggest things is just to really stay within a, a good, tight friend group of people that ride really well. And I think like anybody's kids, they're probably going to listen to somebody else before they listen to you. And I've been very fortunate to have some great friends that have really taken the kids under their their arms and and uh, and shown them a, a lot of tricks and safety tips and everything else. And just how to get through, you know, a bad situation, like, you know, how to get through a big mud hole, how to get over that hill. You know, sometimes we've gotten into those situations, not really on purpose, but by accident, and you have to figure out how to get out. And uh, they all become stronger getting through that. So it, it, I think beyond anything else, experience um, is huge. And like all of us here in this podcast, like, we're getting the kids out and doing stuff. And it's it's very important, like Justin said. Um, because you know they're going to end up at their friends' houses and their friends are going to say, jump on this, or or they're going to see their friends doing something really stupid and they might be able to stop them. But, you know, you just, you hope your kid's prepared well enough and then you got to set them off and let them do their thing. Yeah, I think that peer, especially as they get older, the, you know, the peer influence is really key um, and they can be, you know, they can be positive influences or negative influences as you if you sort of described you know how much hair i have right <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah exactly it's 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 funny how th- when we do look at um, some of the evidence around you know role modeling and parent role modeling especially in the driving um area they are watching you um but it does reveal you may not think they are but when we ask them they actually are really watching parents so i think that's one of the things that uh you know role modeling dem- you know demonstrating what what the right thing to do is or the safe thing to do is and to still have fun and i think that's the you know whole philosophy of this podcast is you know you can you can engage in activities and there's certain things that are no goes because they're just we know they're too dangerous you you know, like you said, Justin, you know, wearing uh, wearing the right boots, wearing the gloves, wearing the gear and other things. It's how you mitigate those those risks and hazards for for their different age groups. And you've all touched a little bit on that age specific kind of experience. Um, and the size of the ATV is really interesting because we don't have a lot of information about 
you know, what, whether they're safer, obviously, you know, putting a, a young child on a full size ATV is not um, the way to go. But have you had challenges in finding ATVs that are appropriate for your kids? I see Dawn, you're nodding. <laughs> you want to tell us about that? Well, uh, when my my oldest was 14 years old, basically she could only ride a, a 110 cc's and she was quite large for, for this little bike. And so for an example, if we're going on the trails and we get into a, a nice little situation, it doesn't have a lot of power to get her out of that. So yeah, this the smaller vehicles, uh, smaller ATVs were an issue for her. Yeah. Yeah. Todd, yeah, I saw you nodding as well. Is that something that you've had to deal with? We we went through it. And uh, honestly, we have a, a Honda Rancher. It's 420cc or something like that. And uh, it's by all means not a huge machine, but it, it's it's been fine for all of them from, you know, 9, 10 years old and up. Um, they can all reach, you know, the foot rest and they can, they can handle it fine. It, it, the small kids ones that are available, one cost prohibitive sometimes too, um, if you can even find one for sale. But like Don said, like they just, they get hung up on stuff. They, they just, they're not fantastic unless it's a really smooth trail, which I haven't come across too many perfectly smooth trails. So it, it, it's a, a small size adult ATV. They all say, you know, you can't be on there unless you're 16, but you, you got to trust your kids a little bit. And it's awfully hard for them to get going too quickly. Mm -hmm. um, especially if you do like what Don says is you put them in, behind you and, and they got to figure out how to get past you if they're going to pass you. Pass you. Yeah. I think riding together is really key as well. Justin, have you had um, have you had different size ATVs? Yeah, and, and that's actually the issue that I'm going to run into this year. As far as ATVs, like I said, we've been we've been mostly on since the first ATV, which was which was quite small. He he upgraded quite quickly to something a little bigger, and, and we've been more into dirt bikes. But this year is going to be my challenge because he's 12 years old, but he's 190 pounds and almost as tall as me. A 110 cc dirt bike or four wheeler is is actually more dangerous for him than a bigger bike because he's overriding it. And I see that happen with kids all the time is they're out riding it. They're doing what the bike is not capable of doing. I actually we had a we had a crash here at the end of August and we just got our cast off the end of September. And my personal opinion was due to it being too small. He's got too much weight over the back tire. He wasn't going fast. Um, it kicked the front wheel out and he put his hands down and he, he actually had a pretty bad break in one arm. And like I say, he was, he was doing 20 miles an hour. You can do, you can put on all the gear you want. You can do whatever you want. You can be as safe as you can be. And something's still going to happen. You know, uh, he was actually pretty upset about the whole thing where, you know, dad, why? I said, because accidents happen, my friend, like there's not a lot you can do about it. Well, I hope he's uh, I hope he's recovered uh, soon. And this conversation has been really quick. <laughs> Time has flown by, but I want to thank you for joining me and really sharing your experiences and some of the things that you've dealt with when you've had your kids using uh, using ATVs and and some of the strategies. I know a lot of the listeners are going to be really interested in this. So thanks so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Learn more about ATV safety at parachute.ca slash ride safe ride on. That's parachute.ca slash ride safe ride on. It's time to open your parachute. Wayne Dobb is the general manager of the Canadian Quad Council and brings over 15 years experience working in the power sports industry. Wayne, thanks for joining me on this podcast today to talk about ATVs and safety. Thank you, Pamela. Nice to see you. You too. So our, our parents, Justin, Don, and Todd, touched on several recommended safety approaches like wearing protective gear and supervising their kids and riding together really came out strongly. You know, when, in your role and in your many, many years experience using ATVs, what other safety recommendations do you have around children and youth and ATVs? 
So, so one of the things that I find quite frequently is, is that although parents try to be safe when, when gearing up their children, they're often, u- often using improper sized gear. So you see them grabbing grandpa's helmet and, and throwing it on and he's an extra large and uh, uh, looks like the, the, the child is got, you could put three heads in this, this helmet and that can be actually more dangerous than, than not wearing a helmet at all because the helmet can become the source of the injury if the head has the ability to uh, move around within that. So not only, and that can go true for any other safety gear as well. Mm-hmm. If the goggles are too large, they're not going to, to seal off. If the if the gloves are too large, then, then the child doesn't have the proper control over the hand controls and whatnot. So I would say that, that properly fitted gear is probably the thing that I see second most to not wearing the, the gear at all. And what about training, um, the courses that can be taken? What, uh, you know, do you recommend those? Yes, absolutely. So there are courses available for age six and up, depending on what province you're in. Uh, it, it's it's uh, legislated by the province, but in most cases, it would be 12 and up that, that, uh, that the training would take place. And uh it is a very good way to give them some basic instruction. But however, it is a four-hour course and you didn't learn to drive a car in four hours. You're not going to learn to drive an ATV in four hours either. But the child is going to learn how to lean and how to control the ATV and why you stop in a certain way, how how to do the things that you need to do. And then after that, it's just practice. But I agree with the parents that the best thing that you can do is after that training is to be out there with them. So really supervising them, uh, you know, actively, like, um, you know, being a good role model for sure, but also, you know, being right there while they're using the ATV. Absolutely. And it's hard to do if there's not two other ATVs because it's nice not to have the child in front. It's nice to have an adult in front and it's nice to have an adult in the rear. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you can only choose one, put the child in front. Don't put the child in the rear because the child being in the front, you ride to the child's ability. The other way around, the child is trying to catch up to you. So, um, and plus you can, you can keep your eyes on them when they're in front of you. But the ideal situation certainly is to have an ATV, an an adult ATV in front and an adult ATV in the back. Mm -hmm. And the trails that, that people, use for ATVs how are are, you know they're they're meant for ATVs so they're going to be you know uh, different kinds of trails but are they largely maintained in in some way that that you know when they go out to ride are they um you know are they are they maintained or is that depends on where the trail is in in the country it's very much dependent on where the trail is most of the trails that in fact um my clubs and organizations all work with are that's their role is they maintain those trails mm-hmm. they make sure there's there's uh adequate uh, passability on them we also are very environmentally concerned about them so many of the trails that would would have say 10 years ago would have been a sloppy mess to get through are now corduroy roads. So if if you don't understand what a corduroy road is, Mm -hmm. it's basically like walking on your deck. So you're driving on your deck in your backyard through the trail. And uh, PEI is one of the strongest representations of that. You can go on, uh, on corduroy roads that can be up to half a kilometer long. So it's kind of neat going through the, going through the marsh and, and you're up on a, on a corduroy road. Yeah. And, you know, some of the parents talked about, you know, allowing really young kids on ATVs. And I know ages and, you know, the size of ATVs is is an area where there's a lot of different opinions and, and, and coming at it from different perspectives. You know, from an injury prevention agency, you know, we are looking at, you know, older kids, definitely looking at their size and weight and cognitive ability and physical ability and all that kind of thing. Um, what do you see when, you know, when you look at, you know, really young kids using ATVs? Oh, it scares me to death. So I was, I happened to be in Nashville, Tennessee this past summer and uh, they have a little different approach. So we were on trails that were 
extremely rugged trails, like mm-hmm. expert level trails. And you would get folks in there as a family and they're in a four seater side by side type ATV. None of them are wearing any helmets. None of them are strapped in except for the baby who's in, an, in a car type uh, child seat in the back <gasps> seat. And they're taking them out there on this trail. And it just, oh my. Uh, it, nothing I can say, but it scared me to death. Yeah, because you think of, and I mean, we've we've seen some um, recent inquests around, you know, young kids being on ATVs and and you know their ability and the the you know way that the ATV or side by side you know operates. So there's there's lots of good information I think for parents out there. What sources of information would you recommend for parents looking to learn about how to keep their kids safe if they do in fact use an ATV? So the the Canadian Off-Highway Vehicle Distributors Council has lots of good information, cohv.ca. So there's lots of great information there for for youth riders. And that is an an organization that is set by the manufacturers. Uh, Dealerships often will have uh, the ability to know uh, the, the smart person in the area. The dealership themselves often doesn't, but they often know the smart person in the area that would be able to to help them with that stuff. There is lots and lots of information on on Google and on YouTube and whatnot about keeping uh, children safe on ATVs. And uh, and I absolutely agree with you about the, the, the younger children and their cognitive ab- ability. The other thing is, is when you get really young children, the weight of the helmet on their head is their neck strong enough to be bobbed around the way that you normally would on an ATV. So I, I really think... Although there are some children that can handle it much younger, uh, 12 is a really good age to stick with. If you're under 12 years of age, being on a trail is probably not the best thing on an ATV for, for, for full safety for your kids. Thanks so much for joining me today and sharing that information. I know a lot of parents out there will be going to to the website Parachute and uh, the Canadian Pediatric Society also has information. So thanks so much for joining us today and sharing your expertise. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. Popping the Bubble Wrap is a podcast of Parachute, Canada's national injury prevention charity whose mission is for Canadians to live long lives to the fullest by preventing serious and fatal injuries. We release episodes every two weeks. Next episode, we'll be talking to and about young drivers. Help us reach parents and caregivers by sharing this link with your friends and family and giving us a five-star review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Popping the Bubble Wrap is produced for Parachute by Story Studio Network and Eye Contact Productions. This is Story Studio Network.